वेलकम बैक टू माई चैनल मिस मेडिसिन इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट मैकोनियम एस्पिरेशन सिंड्रोम वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट एपिडेमोलॉजी वट इज मिकोनियम एस्पिरेशन सिंड्रोम वट मिकोनियम कंटेन्स कॉजेज डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस लैब इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड इट्स ट्रीटमेंट इफ यू आर न्यू हेयर सब्सक्राइब टू द चैनल एंड फॉलोअर्स ऑन इंस्टाग्राम एंड फेसबुक epidemiology of meconium aspiration syndrome mas out of 130 million annuals birth worldwide it is estimated that approximately 15 million newborn infants aspirate meconium and 750000 to 1.8 million of these develop mas meconium aspiration syndrome it occurs more frequently in infants who are post mature and small for gestational age mortality rate vary between 4 to 12% representing approximately 30000 to 2 lakh deaths annually ms occurs in approximately 35% of live births with msaf now the question is what is meconium it is sterile viscous dark green odorless substance in another words first feces or first stool of life its ph is 5.5 to 7.0 it includes water 72 to 80% discarmated cells from the intestine and skin gastrointestinal mucin lanugo hairs pancreatic juice fatty material from the vernix sezosa or caseosa amniotic fluid and intestinal secretions blood group specific glycoproteins and bile description of meconium it can be watery moderately stained and pea soup watery amniotic fluid that is thin and sustained moderately stained opaque fluid without particles and pea soup fluid with thick meconium with particles now the question is what is mas meconium aspiration syndrome it is a respiratory disorder which caused by inhalation of meconium in amniotic fluid into the tracheobronchial tree physiology of mas meconium is first found in the fetal ileum between the 10th and 16th week of the gestation in utero passage of meconium is uncommon due to lack of strong peristalsis good anal sphincter tone a cap of viscous meconium in the rectum meconium passage uncommon before 36 weeks but occurs in more than 30% of pregnancy beyond 42 weeks Here are some factors which promote the passage of meconium in uterus: placental insufficiency, maternal hypertension, preeclampsia, oligohydrominos, maternal drug abuse, especially of tobacco and cocaine, maternal infection or chorioamnionitis, fetal gasping secondary to hypoxia. Here are some causes of meconium passage. intrauterine stress causing fetal hypoxia asphyxia and acidosis fetal hypoxia hypoxia causes increased gastrointestinal peristalsis and relaxed anal sphincter tone and in mature fetuses which is post dated babies post term babies facilitated by myelination of nerve fibers an increase in parasympathetic tone increases in the concentration of motilin which is a peptide that stimulates the contraction of the intestine muscle vagal stimulation produced by cord or head compression leading to in utero fetal stress other factors are increased maternal age previous reproductive casualties prenatal complications prolonged gestation obesity toxemia hypertension and anemia postpartum aspiration inadequate removal of meconium from the airway prior to the first breath use of ppv prior to clearing the airways of meconium pet physiology of mas aspiration induces hypoxia we have three major pulmonary effects airway obstruction which is ball valve phenomenon 
chemical pneumonitis, PPHN and surfactant dysfunction. It results in acidosis, hypoxemia and hypercapnia and infection. Here is the mechanism of meconium aspiration. It can be prostate or fetal compromise because of hypoxia and cold compression. When infant aspirate the meconium, it can cause peripheral airway obstruction, proximal airway obstruction, cytokine activation and inactivation of surfactant and the fifth one is vasoactive mediators. Peripheral airway obstruction, it can be complete or partial. If it is complete, it can cause atelectasis and it leads to ventilation, perfusion, mismatch. And if it is partial, it leads to ball valve effect air trapping and air leaks and that proximal airway obstruction led to acidosis, hypoxemia and hypercapnia and if cytokine activation present it can lead to pneumonitis. Next is the physical features. Severe respiratory distress may be present. Symptoms include like cyanosis, and expiratory grunting, which is prolonged expiratory phase, LR flaring, intercostal retractions, tachypnea, barrel chest in the presence of air trapping, osculated rails and ronchi, which is present in some cases, yellow-green staining of fingernails, umbilical cord and skin. Meconium found below vocal cords, which defines MAS, meconium aspiration syndrome. Pulmonary hypertension is observed with severe MAS in 50% cases. Signs of cerebral irritation resulting from the cerebral edema or hypoxia may appear soon after birth or later. Jitteriness and seizures. Classification of respiratory disease it can be divided into three parts, mild, moderate and severe. In mild MAS, disease requiring less than 40% of oxygen for 48 hours. Moderate MAS, disease requiring more than 40% oxygen for more than 48 hours without air leak. And in severe MAS, disease requiring assisted ventilation for more than 48 hours often associated with PPHN. So here are differential diagnosis of MAS. It can be aspiration syndrome, congenital diaphragmatic hernia, congenital pneumonia, idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, PPHN, persistent pulmonary hypertension of newborn, TDN, transient tachypnea of newborn and TGA, transposition of the great arteries. Now, how you can investigate the MAS lab investigations? We will check acid base status, ventilation perfusion mismatch, and perinatal stress are prevalent and assessment of acid-based status which is crucial. Metabolic acidosis from perinatal stress is complicated by respiratory acidosis from parenchymal disease and PPHN, arterial blood gases and continuous measurement of oxygenation by pulse oximetry is necessary for appropriate management. We will also check serum electrolytes, sodium, potassium, calcium concentrations at 24 hours to detect SIADH and ARF due to perinatal stress. We can also do CBC in utero or perinatal blood loss as well as infection contributes to postnatal stress. Hemoglobin and hematocrit levels must be sufficient to ensure adequate oxygen carrying capacity. Thrombocytopenia increases the risk for neonatal hemorrhage. Neutropenia or neutrophilia with left shift of the differential may indicate perinatal bacterial infection. Polycythemia may be present secondary to chronic or acute fetal hypoxia. Polycythemia is associated with decreased pulmonary blood flow and may exacerbate the hypoxia associated with MAS and PPHN. We can also do chest x-ray which determine the extent of intrathoracic pathology. 
identify areas of atelectasis and air block syndromes and it also help in appropriate positioning of the endotracheal tube and umbilical catheters. Bilateral diffuse grossly patchy opacities or coarse infiltrates are also seen, hyperinflation with areas of emphysema, spontaneous pneumothorax or pneumomediastinum in 25% cases, small pleural effusion in 20% cases, no air bronchogram, rapid clearing usually within 48 hours. You can see the chest x-ray, air trapping and hyperexpansion due to airway obstruction, it is diffuse, asymmetric patchy infiltrates, areas of consolidation and hyperinflation. This is the chest x-ray of diffuse chemical pneumonitis from constituents of meconium. Chest x-ray of atelectasis. Next imaging is CT or MRI. Later in the course of MAS, when the infant is stable, imaging procedures of the brain like MRI, CT scan or cranial ultrasound are indicated if the infant's neurological examination is abnormal. We also have to do echocardiogram. It will help to ensure normal cardiac structures to assess cardiac function and to assess the severity of pulmonary hypertension and right to left shunting. Next, what are the complications of MAS? Severe parenchymal pulmonary disease, pulmonary hypertension, air block syndromes like pneumothorax, pneumomediastinum, pneumopericardium pulmonary interstitial emphysema and pulmonary interstitial emphysema. How we can prevent MAS? Obstetricians should monitor mothers at risk for uteroplacental insufficiency and fetal status in an attempt to identify fetal stress with repeated cytotocography and biophysical profile. When meconium is detected, administering amino infusion with warm style saline may be beneficial. This procedure dilutes meconium in the amniotic fluid. Therefore, the severity of aspiration may be minimized. However, studies have failed to show benefit. Timing of delivery in pregnancies that continue past due date, induction as early 41 weeks may help prevent MAS. Upon delivery of the head of the baby, careful suctioning of the posterior pharynx potential for aspiration of meconium. Next is how you can manage MAFs. You have to maintain an optimal thermal environment, minimal handling to prevent right to left shunting leading to hypoxia and acidosis, continue respiratory care, oxygen therapy by hood or positive pressure, mechanical ventilation, minimize the mean airway pressure, use as short and inspiratory time as possible. Oxalatory high frequency and jet ventilation are alternative effective therapies. Hyperventilation to induce hypocapnia and respiratory alkalosis is not recommended. Broad spectrum antibiotics according to sensitivity pattern. For ventilatory support, you have to provide sufficient oxygen to prevent PAH, CPAP if FiO2 requirements more than 0.4, a trial of CPAP with pressure of 2 to 6 cm of H2O before mechanical ventilation, indication for conventional mechanical ventilation, partial oxygen less than 50 mm mercury, partial carbon dioxide more than 60 mm mercury, persistent acidosis with pH less than 7.25, apnea and clinical deterioration with increasing RD. For conventional mechanical ventilation, you need high flow rate, short inspiratory time, adequate expiratory time to prevent air trapping, PEP 2 to 6 cm of H2O, inspiratory time 0.4 to 0.5 second. For volume and pressure support, you have to give inhaled nitric oxide has replaced the use of most IV pulmonary vasodilators Maintain systemic BP greater than pulmonary BP, thereby decreasing the right to left shunt through the patent ductus arteriosus by volume expansion, transfusion therapy and systemic vasopressors including dopamine. 
you can also provide surfactant therapy surfactant therapy is now common use to replace displaced or inactivated surfactant and as a detergent to remove meconium it may decrease respiratory failure with mas within 6 hours with 3 doses ongoing studies on pulmonary lavage with surfactant and albumin bile acid blocker administration you can also give albumin bile acid blockers Meconium contains a high concentration of free fatty acids, lipids and bile acids which may have toxic effects on the lung. Bile acid blockers such as cholestramine and albumin which is serum bovine albumin that binds to lipids and free fatty acids are administered into the trachea of the newborn infant thereby reducing the pulmonary toxicity. Administration may be coupled to surfactant administration. Last one is ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, is employed if all other therapeutic options have been exhausted, effective in treating MAS by associated with poorer neurological outcomes. Extracorporeal membrane oxygenation is a lung bypass system that allows for oxygenation of blood while the lung recovers. I hope you got all information about MAS meconium aspiration syndrome if you have any question you can write me in the comment box thank you